All right, lads, welcome back to another video. And today we are going to go through the Rugby Samoa logo that I actually submitted to Rugby Samoa to be their official crest for the rugby team. A very exciting competition and I really hope it does well. So let me walk you through the final process of that logo. Okay, just to fill in, previously we actually saw a bit of the process of me creating the logo and creating the basic, well, basic, it was fairly advanced part of the logo, but there were still some tweaks and bits to go. So if you haven't checked that out, go back, look at that now, and you can see the bit that got us to here. So you can see on the screen now, uh, the previous logo from the end of that video. And then this is what I ended up with come the end of my refinement of the logo. You can see that the general essence of the logo stays the same, but there are some differences. So that's what I'm gonna go through right now. One of the main things we did was we tightened up the logo a bit, just to make it take less of a footprint away. The ruby ball was a bit too angled for my liking, so we tilted it right back up. Another thing that we did is we edited some of the curls on the leaves, rounding the ball of the red ginger flower, which is part of uh, the brief. And then of course we centered the stars and we got rid of this little line down the bottom that I thought looked really nice, but in terms of practicality for a logo, it it's gonna lose a lot of detail when putting the print and all that, so I just ended up getting rid of it. It was fairly unnecessary. And then we leave the original cross that came from the original international crest because we wanted to link it up a little bit. And another bit that I changed was the typeface in the bottom because the original typeface, I did not have actually the license to use. You would have had to pay for that for them to be able to use it in their branding. But the typeface I'm currently using now, I think not only does it suit it a bit better and it's a bit easier to read, it doesn't look as cartoonish, but it's actually an open license. So they'll be well able to use that across their branding and no issue that's going to happen like what would happen with the last typeface. So those are the changes I've made. So let me walk you through my actual current logo and why things are the way they are because there is reasoning behind all this which I would have posted on my post on Instagram. So go follow me there if you want to see more of my stuff where I post more regular edits than I can on here. So we have the Rugby Samoa logo here. Of course uh, the brand name is Rugby Samoa. It used to be Samoan Rugby Union I think. They wanted to change that as part of their new branding exercise as I got in a brief that I showed you in the previous video. So we're using that. I'm we're using a typeface that is blocky and easy to read and can be read from far away so even when it's on the jersey it's still very legible but are the mean little thin lines that sometimes can be difficult to read and get lost so that was my reasoning behind that and i think the sort of style of it kind of suits sort of a pacific island feel hard to explain but i think it just really suits the Samoan national team let me know down below if that's what you think as well typeface i believe is called rowdies and on my post on instagram i showed like the whole alphabet of it just to give an example of what every letter in caps lock look like the surrounding flower in the red, the original red that is found on the Samoan flag and the original Samoan logo is of the red ginger plant, which is something that they mentioned in the brief that they wanted represented in their logo as it's its national flower. So I took an image to reference it off and I created leaves branching off and surrounding it like a wreath just to kind of contain the logo while representing it. And it keeps its shape and it kind of creates the rugby ball shape that it's going for. And the reason why it's a rugby ball shape is quite obvious because it's representing the rugby union. They wanted rugby to be represented in the logo since it is the national sport of Samoa. So this was the easiest way to be able to make a blend in. And it is something that has been successfully done by previous clubs and international teams like Romania. It is one of those things that if it's not broke, don't fix it. Other teams are doing it quite successfully. So why not these as well? The stars in the middle of the logo, if you did not know already, is actually the stars that are on the Samoan national flag and are in that orientation and positioning and all that. I did not change that. I would just take that, lift that from, because the stars would lose their meaning if they are put in a different pattern. They need to be the exact same as the flag, which is why I just took, copied and pasted from the flag itself. And then that white swoosh, to be honest with you, it's just a swoosh. It just gives a little bit more shape to the rugby ball and breaks up that big block of blue that's right in the middle of the logo. I think it looks nice and it looks good when it's a hollowed out piece on print. And then of course we got the original cross from the previous logo that they still use today. And I wanted to take that because it was actually, that original logo is the country's national emblem. So that's still going to be used in everyday life over in Samoa for other bits and pieces just no longer the rugby and maybe it'll be used in conjunction with this rugby logo but to keep it in the family of logos and so it doesn't lose anything while also using the stars I took the original cross so it has something that you can relate back to as when you're looking at two of the logos. I think there was nothing wrong with the way the cross was designed and the idea of trying to put it centrally at the top
top is basically shows respect to religion as they are a highly religious country. You don't want the, the cross or the sign of the religion to be buried at the bottom where it's kind of like the last thing you see. You want it to be one of the first things you see and it'll be up on its own. So we have it centrally up the top in the middle and being pointed towards by the red ginger plant. So that is the explanation of that logo. And there is reasons behind the way I designed it. I will say I am not the most talented of logo designers. My game is more photo compositions using Photoshop and stuff. But when I saw this competition, I could not turn down the chance of maybe having a piece of my artwork out there in the international rugby stage. I think it's quite a cool thing. And I would have urged anyone that I knew and I sent it on to a couple of the designer guys that I know and hopefully they entered as well. And last but not least in this video is the deliverables that I had to give forward. So what they asked for in the brief itself, you will see this when you get a professional brief for someone. And if someone who hasn't worked with logo designers before, this is in general what is expected of you. So you could use this as like a, a basic template of what you should provide your clients with if you are going to freelance doing logo designs and for some reason watching this video. They asked for a PNG in just black, a PNG in just white. These will be so they can see it basically on prints, on maybe official documents, other things that they were going to use, just a monochromatic uh, logo on rather than all these colors. And then of course a PNG of the colored version, the red and blue. These are going to be used in different situations I imagine and they're going to be able to get a better idea of the shape and what looks better on what with these kind of colors. They asked for EPS files are called so they'll be able to edit the line work and all that stuff in future and they also ask for JPEG versions of the files. Not everyone asked for this JPEG I find is not the most important version but they asked for them so of course I supply them. The PNG will hold just a logo with no background while the JPEG will flatten the image and create a white background in behind automatically so that's the difference between the two. I also did a small PDF brochure explaining the use cases that I went in. I showed a couple of use cases so on a document I had it put onto one of the jerseys. I then did an explanation of what basically I just explained to you in this video. I showed them the typeface, I showed them the colors I used and I also compared it to the old logo so they could see kind of the difference and compare it to the old, to the new and see which one they prefer. Now I will say I am a big fan of the old logo so to me after looking at this for like a week or two it's kind of lost its magic on me. I'm not as excited about it but that happens to everyone in every project so please remember that. If someone's seen this for the first time I think this is absolutely brilliant but to me now I've seen it so much and I've kind of tweaked a little bit I like it I think it's really cool but I've always liked the original logo I've gone in a completely different direction to try something interesting so let's hope we'll see over the next couple of weeks I imagine how I get on in this competition hopefully some feedback would be great even if I don't win a bit of feedback would be absolutely brilliant so if you've enjoyed this video leave a like leave a comment down below it'll help me so much subscribe to the channel if you want to see more sports graphics and content as I mentioned previously I have an Instagram at the sports creative one go check that out. I have a website tscgraphics.com where you can purchase posters but they're not going to get to you before Christmas unfortunately but that sort of updates every other week and I, you can always then contact me through that website but most of all subscribe to the channel and have a good one. All right good luck.